All right, we got more examples here from the, the YMAP assignment. Uh, in this case, we're given some coordinates, one, four, that's a point on the original graph, f of x. Write an ordered pair that must be on the graph of this transformation, y equals f of x plus five, and plus two. So we got two different transformations. Each of them affects a different coordinate inside the parentheses, this plus five, that is a horizontal transformation that's gonna affect only the x coordinate. And we see that right here, so it's gonna move the graph to the left. We're gonna take that C value from the function notation. And instead of adding, we're gonna subtract it from the original X coordinate. Outside the function notation, this plus two, that is a vertical transformation that's gonna affect the Y coordinate. And you can see that right here, that's gonna move the graph up Two spaces, we'll take that D value and add it to the Y coordinate to get our transformation. So the original X coordinate was one. I need to subtract five. This would be the opposite sign of what it says inside the parentheses. So one minus five is gonna give me negative four. The original Y coordinate is four. I need to add two to that, so it's gonna give me six after I submit and I'm gonna have to make a graph. So the original point is already been graphed. That's one, four. I need to graph the transformed point. So negative four and six. And so that shows me a point which has been transformed by moving left five spaces and up two spaces. And that blue dot represents my transformation. All right, this time I'm given the coordinates four, four uh, from the original graph. I'm asked to write the ordered pair that will be on the graph of this transformation, y equals one quarter times f of negative one half x. So again, we've got two different transformations. Each of them affects a different coordinate. The one fourth that's being multiplied on the outside of the function notation and so that is a vertical stretch or compression. Since that A value is less than one, it's gonna compress the graph shorter. The negative one half on the inside of the function notation parentheses is actually got two different descriptions. There's one transformation, but we've got two different aspects of that description. The negative sign that's gonna reflect and that one half, that'll be my stretch or compression. And so we can see those down here at the bottom of our notes page. So the negative aspect of that coefficient is gonna give me that horizontal flip. The K number, that's my horizontal stretch or compression. Uh, and in this case, since K is less than one, it's gonna stretch the graph wider. So I've got these two different transformations that are happening. They're both really gonna have kind of the same appearance if we did only one of them. Um, the vertical compression is gonna make the graph shorter and the horizontal stretch is gonna make the graph wider. They're both gonna happen simultaneously because we have those two different transformations, but at different rates. And so let's look at the rates. Uh, the vertical stretch I'm gonna multiply that Y coordinate by the A number. Let's do that first. So the A value is one quarter. I'm gonna multiply the original Y coordinate of four times one fourth. So it's gonna give me a new, new Y coordinate of one. The X coordinate, I need to use this K value, that negative one half to get my new X coordinate. And so let's, let's take a gander over here to the notes page. So I'm gonna take the K value. I was gonna include the negative sign as part of K. I need to get the reciprocal of that. So if K is negative a half, the reciprocal is gonna be negative two. So I'm gonna take that reciprocal, which is negative two, multiply that onto the X coordinate, which was four. Four times negative two is negative eight. All right, so I can submit that and then I'm given the graph. So here's the original point at four, four. And so 
it's just a single point. It's hard to see exactly what's happening uh, compression wise or stretch wise with just a single point. But from the origin, it's four spaces to the right and four spaces up. This new point, negative eight, one, obviously is much wider. It's twice as far away, sideways, twice as far away from the center of the graph, from the y-axis. And it's also shorter. Instead of four spaces up from the x-axis, it's only one space up from the x-axis. So you could imagine like if we'd like, there was more of a shape like, you know, a parabola or a, an absolute value function, something like that, which passed through the origin in order to get this from the origin to the green dot, uh, it's gonna look taller and narrower and to the blue dot, if I go from the origin to the blue dot, it's gonna look much shorter and wider. All right, skipping up to uh, question nine here. So the following points are on f of x. This time I'm given more than one point. So I got point A, point B, and point C. I've got the coordinates for all of those. And I'm going to transform each of them. So write the ordered pairs that must be on the graph of this transformation. G of x equals f of x plus 5 minus 2. Okay, so the plus 5 is going to affect the x coordinate. Uh, I'll have to subtract 5. It always do the opposite operation for the transformations that are inside the parentheses. This minus two is gonna affect the y coordinate and uh, subtract two from each of those y coordinates. So sometimes people like to work uh, point by point and do everything on point A and then everything on point B. I'll, I like to, to work by operation. Uh, and so let's just, uh, I'll do all the x coordinates first. So I know I'm gonna take the x coordinates and subtract five to the opposite uh, of what it says plus to the opposite. So from point A, I had negative two, negative two minus five is gonna give me a negative seven. Point B was negative 5, negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10, and C had uh, an x-coordinate of 2, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So I can just do the same thing over and over again. And then I switch, let's do the y-coordinates. This time I'm subtracting 2, so 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 2 is 1, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. It's a bit, and I'm going to graph. So the three points are connected in order from A to B to C. There's my original points. Now I'm going to draw the transformation. So I can go ahead and use those coordinates that I already have. So I got negative 7, 0, click. Negative 10, 1, click. And then negative 3, negative 4, click. And it's going to draw the dots on there for me. Uh, so I don't need to worry about coming back and adding different types of dots. These dots have been done for me. Awesome. Now let's jump to number 11. So following points on the, the original graph f of x, there's points a, b, and c. And uh, you write the ordered pairs that must be on the graph of g of x equals f of 1 half times x. Well, so I only got one transformation to work with here. It's that 1 half that's inside the parentheses multiplied onto the x. That is a k value. It's going to give me a horizontal stretch or compression. Uh, and since one half is less than one, it's actually going to be a stretch. We'll be making my graph wider. So I'm going to take the k value, which is a half, do the reciprocal of that to get two. That is what I will multiply by the x coordinate to get my new coordinates. So one half from the the k value inside the parentheses, the reciprocal is 2, multiply all the x coordinates by 2. So this would be 2, this would be 6, this would be negative 8. Those y coordinates are unchanged. There are no transformations outside the parentheses. Nothing changes the, x, the, the y. So 4, negative 1, and 3 stay exactly the same. There is my graph. Uh, it's already been the original graph with the dots connected from A to B to C. So I can go ahead and use these new coordinates to graph the transformation. So first point is at 2, 4. So already we can see uh, some stretch. This is wider. That point is twice as far away from the y-axis. 6, negative 1. And there again, we can see that point also twice as far away from the y-axis, and then my last point, negative 8, 3, 
And that is also twice as far away from the y-axis. On the opposite side, so everything stretches away from the y-axis. It's the same basic like slanty V-shape, just everything is stretched farther away from the y-axis. That's what a horizontal stretch looks like. 